car. That is the Kenny Habal led carpets, Mikhail Grenier behind the wheel right now. Now going to the break, I promised you a special guest, and boy have we got something special for you. It is Mr. Le Mans, Tom Christensen, the greatest ever at Le Mans, nine-time winner, six-time winner of the 12 Hours of Sebring, and a really dear friend of ours. Tom, thanks for making some time for us. How are you doing? I'm doing well. It's, uh, I'm watching. It's such a great race to watch, and uh, I, I love every, every minute of it. The state kept me awake all night here in Denmark. Tom, you never competed here. You came close, mate, but you've been here. You've been the Grand Marshal. Special place. We've got a few Danes in the race here. I'm in with the shout-out victory here today. Talk about Kevin Magnussen making the move to sports car racing. How do you think he'll do? Ah, he, he's doing very well, and uh, constantly he's always putting the times in, and they are, of course, nursing the car, and, and that's, in that sense, he's doing very, very well. All eyes are on him in Denmark and the other five drivers who are competing. Uh, and uh, so it's a big event for, for, for us in Denmark now. Yeah, it's true that I was there a few years ago as Grand Marshal. It's, uh, it's lovely to be there. And uh, back then, uh, Chip Ganassi actually signed me at the Rolex Dinner. Uh, so uh, one day I will be there with him. But uh, first, you know, it's for Magnus and car number one, I hope. Kevin said you'd given him a lot of advice over the years, but you also took him to the Formula One stewards room a few, few times as well. Yeah, he never listens, you know. He, maybe he takes my advice, but I think he, he tends to forget it pretty, pretty quickly. You know, these Magnussen, they, uh, they are special breeds and they are doing well. And uh, it's just great to, to see him and it really lifts also the, um, the sports car racing uh, again up to uh, a level where we, we want it to be here in Denmark. And uh, we're just uh, so happy for the Rolex 24. And the next one, obviously, is uh, e Sebring, which has a big... Uh, big love of, 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 of us gains in, uh, in our heart. Tom, Dylan Hart Jr. in the booth. Pretty impressive helmet collection you got there behind you. Uh, what, what are all those helmets? Are all those yours? Do you have a favorite? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Favorite. They are all mine. So they are di this one maybe from the my first the GPA. I don't know if you remember them. They were very, very good when we were here in, in karting. But all of them are some of course, you have memories like yourself from from different time in, in your career, and uh, some are less sweaty than others. But uh, it's it's nice to see how the evolution has gone in, in the helmet design in general. Yeah, you got some trophies in there, I think, as well. So we'll see some of those. Yeah, um, that, that's a Christmas trip. Please. That's all. That's not only first places. There's a lot of second and thirds. But I mean, these are of course uh, very proud of these from Le Mans. Wow. And, uh, and then upstairs, I have the, the Sebring trophies. I uh, see He just me, he finished. He jumped out. Maybe he got a bit car sick now. It's Marco Sorens and the, the G GT Aston Martin, the world champion, um, who is uh, having a run in the in the sim here today, and and also watching the the race together with me. And that's the champion winning car from WEC World Champion 2013. And that's my three. My teammates and uh, also seeing Lloyd was competing, doing very well at the beginning of the Rolex 24, and unfortunately retired. The man cave, oh, oh, man cave is right there. It certainly is. Yeah. Look at that. What's that, Tom? Tell us about the car. That's a Bentley. That's from your childhood, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did drive to uh, Bentley to one of your nine victories. Speaking of your victories. We had the fortune of being with you once in the uh, celebratory mode in the Audi hospitality. Maybe we had an alcoholic beverage or two. And you shared with us that as a, as a young fellow, you had a poster of Calvin Fish on your wall. Is that true or not true? It's true. <laughs> he, was, but he, he was standing in the background of uh, Martin Hines, Jesper Willemsen, and, um, uh, and, and, and Ayrton Senna. This was about uh, both was from uh, one was from the karting when he was teammate with, uh, with Martin Hines in the um, in the 250 CC karting championship that Calvin was on it I think it was Hermitage sponsor but I'm sure if you if you ask him he will talk half an hour about that and then he did no, the we, can't, we, can't, he's, we can't he's passed out he's passed out Tom that he's you're speaking so glowingly about it <laughs> and Just in the Formula 2000 uh, him and there was uh, uh, Ayrton Senna, Calvin Fish, that was, uh, I think, the coin, 
there was the, 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 the Dutch driver, I forgot his name, he was very fast as well, very erratic driver. Ask him about that name, I, I hate when I, I, I lose a, a name like that. Kor Oyser was very quick back Exactly, Kor Oyser, yeah. Yeah. So, so Tom, obviously, um, you know, uh, Dale Jr. has a uh, generational story to tell like so many people do in motorsport. You've got children. Are we going to see the next generation of Christensen come through? Is that a possibility or the kids are into other sports? Uh, the, the, the kids are into other sports as well. I mean, mainly my youngest son plays soccer. Oliver, as you remember and know, he's actually managing a few drivers. So he's a lot into the sport and, and following it but he's uh, doing a, a career next to being manager in, um, in management in general, in, 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 in Copen, living in Copenhagen. Uh, and my daughter, I mean, um, some, she's probably the best uh, driver of all of them. She's, she's def def definitely very, very capable and, uh, and she has no fear. But in, um, I don't think so, the short answer. Tom, certainly some big news in the off-season with Audi committing to LMDH. It's going to be great to see that factory squad back on U.S. soil. What are your thoughts? I think we are up to a, a splendid period uh, coming up. It's uh, obviously the 100 years anniversary for Le Mans, and uh, that's something which is uh, at uh, any port management of, of, uh, of car manufacturers today. Uh, some are still looking at that and uh, have not committed officially to it yet. But I think we are up for a period of uh, top line sports car racing. And it's good to see that IMSA, the ACO, and FIA have worked brilliantly together to make that happen and make these things which we already see, uh, see today. We see the performance on track, the drivers are doing really well, the cars are looking better and better. And I'm sure when we get to the, yeah, the hyper classes from the European side and blend it in and, and make a proper BOP with uh, respect between the different um, uh, sort of uh, associations. Uh, we are in to see uh, a brilliant future of sports car racing and uh, I really look forward for it. Tom, thank you so much for giving us some time. We've got to go off to a commercial break. As we go to the break, Kim, maybe you show us the prototype one more time and, uh, and thank you for your time. You're such a great ambassador for Rolex, for Audi, for the sport of sports car racing. Thank you, mate. Really great catching up with you. And Calvin and I did notice that there's no golfing trophies in that man cave. <laughs> <Yeah. man, so. laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Tom Christensen. Thanks, TK. You're the man. Cheers, mate. He gets a wake up every morning and look at that. That's pretty impressive. There's a lot of people salivating over that room of collectibles. What a career Tom Christensen has had.